Welcome to Morningstar's Three Stock Picks. I'm Holly Black. With me is Simon Brazier. He's manager of the 91 UK Alpha Fund. Hello. Morning, Holly. So you've got three UK stocks for us this morning. Where would you like to start? I think I'll start with one of my longest term holdings, actually, which is London Stock Exchange. Um, it's been a stock I've owned for some time, and it's been through a significant transition over the last 10 years. Um, and it isn't what most people think it is today, which is just an exchange business. It has a variety of businesses. It's sort of the underlying infrastructure and plumbing, I suppose, for capital markets. Um, it's a business that continues to grow significantly right across its different businesses and is undertaking a large acquisition, which has been looked at by the regulatory authorities, Refinitiv. But what we think that acquisition is really going to strengthen their, their position across markets. So, you know, a really interesting long-term play for us. And when you hold a business like that, and, and it changes so significantly over time, particularly with acquisitions, do you find you have to keep reassessing it? Yeah, I mean, we spend a lot of time with management and um, and exactly that. I mean, our, my analyst on that, Fred, he um, spends a lot of time. I mean, when the Refinitiv document came out, for example, it was, you know, 100, 200 page document on that acquisition alone. And you know, he spent literally a month you know, getting to know that business. So he actually went out to the US to meet their management out there. So, yes, I mean, it is detailed due diligence because, I mean, these businesses are increasingly complicated. Poor old Fred. Um, what's stock number two? <laughs> um, well, it's actually what I said last year, which is a fever tree, and it's almost the same price as it was last year, but it's halved since then and then come and then bounce back. Um, fever tree to me is a really interesting company. Um, it is a genuine growth company. I mean, it's growing in you know, one of its great growth avenues is the US. It's growing about 90 percent per annum there. And you know, it's a business that we know the brand. Um, it's you know, really riding on the back of the premium, premiumization of alcohol as people are prepared to spend more for better quality drinks. I mean, actually, the lockdown showed its strength because although it wasn't obviously selling as much in the pubs and bars, the off trade, you know, what they were selling in supermarkets and the like was very strong. So we think it's a genuine growth business. It's run very well. Um, and who knows? But I'm, I'm pretty sure at one point it will be bought by one of its sort of larger competitors. And Fevertree has now moved into the US. Are there any other regions it could potentially tap into in the future? Yeah, I mean, I mean, it is quite a global brand. I mean, I was, I was um, in Africa. I was in a hotel, and someone served me. You know, I was very pleased to see how my gin and tonic came with Fever Tree. So, I mean, it's a genuinely global brand now. But, the, but being honest, Holly, the reality is, is the U.S. market is so large that if they can, well, they are starting to crack that. But if they really do get their brand motoring there, then that is the real game changer for that business. Okay, and what is our final stock today? And the final stock is what I bought through the crisis, actually. It's um, Next, the clothing retailer. And actually, one of the things that I said to my team was when we looked at companies, let's find those companies that the crisis will actually make them stronger. Now, it might seem very strange for a retail, particularly a clothing retailer, that how is that stronger in an environment of weakening economic growth to, to a degree? But actually, you know, for a few reasons, one, most of its competitors are now in weaker positions and some of them have gone bust. So from a structural perspective, it can gain market share that way. But second, what Simon Wolfson has been very the chief exec who I think is one of the best chief execs I've ever known and um, has done very cleverly he's, he's turned that business if you remember it used to be the next directory where you got the book that became their online platform and they are genuinely um, a leader in that, in that online platform to the degree that they have at least another hundred brands so you buy Ted Baker clothes via the next online platform and I think you know, they are and if you look at the valuations that are put on things like ASOS and others I think that's a very very valuable part of their business so I think it will manage the transition from selling through physical retail stores into online and it's doing that very successfully so i think actually a very valuable business and one we were able to buy at an incredibly cheap valuation during the crisis even even with those drivers though do you find it a concern when you hear about companies like shopping mall operator into going under because obviously next will have stores in those malls yeah, I mean, the re the reality is, is that actually we love industries where there is a constraint on supply, if that makes sense. So to a degree, you know, Next actually have very flexible leases. That's one good thing. So they're not tied into being in, in shopping centres where they don't want to be. But actually, 
I like to hear when there is a restriction of supply because it actually means the, the stronger gets stronger. And I think Next is one of those dominant players that will continue, will still be here in 10 years and I think will be a much more valuable business. So, you know, yes, it's difficult economically, but I think the reality is from, from an investment point of view, that works for us. Super. Simon, thank you so much for your time. For Morningstar, I'm Holly Black.